In this video, we're going to focus on reflections, specifically reflections over the x-axis, the y-axis, and the origin. So let's take some notes. Let's start with reflections over the x-axis. So let's say you have a point, the ordered pair xy, and you want to reflect that point over the x-axis. The only thing you need to change is the y value. When you reflect over the x-axis, the x values stay the same, but the y values, they change. Now we can illustrate this with a graph. Let's say we have a function y is equal to f of x, where f of x is the square root of x. This graph is going to look like this. Now, if we want to reflect that over the x-axis, keep in mind the x-axis is a horizontal line, the y-axis is the vertical line. When we reflect that graph over the x-axis, we're going to put a negative sign outside of the function f, close to y because the y values change. So this is going to be negative square root x. and it's going to reflect over the x-axis. So it's going to look like this. When x is four, we have the point four comma two. Now when we reflect it, x will still be four. The x values do not change, but notice that the y value, it did change. It changed from positive two to negative two. So a change from y to negative y. So that's what you need to know whenever you're reflecting either a point or a graph over the x-axis. The x values stay the same, but the y values will change. Now let's move on to the y-axis. Now let's say if we want to reflect the point x, y over the y axis. In this case, the y values will stay the same, but the x values will change. So this is going to become negative x comma y. Now just like before, we're going to use a graph, positive root x. it's going to have the same generic shape. But now when reflecting a graph over the y-axis, the negative sign will be inside the function. It's going to be with x and not next to y because the x values are changing. So in this case, the graph is going to reflect over the y-axis. So it's going to move to quadrant two and it's going to look like this. So if we select a point 4 comma 2, the square root of 4 is 2, when we reflect that point, the x value is going to change. 4 is going to change to negative 4, but the y value will remain 2. So anytime you reflect over the y-axis, the x values will change, but the y values will remain the same. Now let's talk about reflections over the origin. So if we want to reflect an ordered pair over the origin, in this case, both X and Y will change the values. They will change sign. So let's go back to our standard graph. Y is equal to the square root of f of x. I mean the square root of x rather. And we're going to reflect that graph over the origin. So in this case, we're going to put a negative sign outside of f and inside of f as well. 
So this is going to be negative square root negative x. The origin is the point zero, 0. It's where the x and the y axis meet. When we reflect over the origin, it's going to go to quadrant 3. So this is quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, quadrant 4. You could think of reflecting over the origin as a two-step process. The order doesn't matter. So first, you could reflect it over the y-axis, where the graph will move towards quadrant 2. And then you reflect it over the x-axis, where it's going to move to quadrant 3. Or if you do it the other way, if you reflect it over the x-axis fir first, it's going to move to quadrant 4. And then if you reflect it over the y-axis, it's going to move to quadrant 3. So that's the way I see it, the reflection over the origin. It's like a double reflection. You're reflecting both over the x and the y-axis. In either case, the point, the graph is going to be there. So going back to our original point, 4, 2, both x and y will change. So now it's going to be negative 4, negative 2. And now we'll put it in quadrant 3. So remember, anytime you reflect over the origin, both x and y will change sign. x, y becomes negative x, negative y. Now let's work on some practice problems. Go ahead and reflect the figure over the y-axis. Feel free to pause the video as you work on this problem. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out the points first. So point A is at 2, comma 1. Point B is located at 5, 1. And point C, that's located at 5, comma 5. So we're going to reflect these three points across the y-axis. And if you remember, if we have the point x, y, when we reflect it over the y-axis, the y values stay the same, but the x values will change. So x, y will become negative x, y. Now we can draw a sketch of what this is going to be. The triangle is going to look something like this when it's reflected over the y-axis. But just to be on the safe side, let's get the new points and then we'll plot it. So all we got to do is change the sign of the x values. So our new a value, we can call it a prime, it's going to be negative 2 comma 1, b prime is going to be negative 5 comma 1, c prime is going to be negative 5, 5. So let's plot a first. So here's a negative 2 comma 1, and then b is going to be here, negative 5, 1, and c is going to be at negative 5, 5. So this is A prime, B prime, C prime. So that's how we can reflect a figure across the y-axis. All we have to do is use this process to change the points and then plot the new figure. In this example, we're given the graph of the absolute value of x plus 2. Go ahead and reflect this graph over the x-axis and write the new equation that describes it as well. So in order to reflect it over the x-axis, the function y equals f of x is going to change and become y equal negative f of x. We're going to put the negative sign outside of the function. Remember, if we're reflecting over the x-axis, the x values will stay the same, but the y values will change. So here's the x-axis. The graph is going to flip below the x-axis. So it's going to look like this. 
instead of having a y-intercept of positive 2, the new y-intercept is going to be at negative 2, and the graph is going to open downward at the same angle. So that's how we can reflect it across the x-axis. Now, to get the new function, all we need to do is put a negative sign in front of f. So y is going to be negative f of x. So we just have to multiply this by negative 1, or put a negative sign in front of both. So it's going to be negative absolute value of x minus 2. So the negative sign in front of the absolute value symbol, what it does is it changes the direction of the graph. So rather than it open it upward, it's going to open downward. Now, when we switch positive 2 to negative 2, the y-intercept is going to change from plus 2 to minus 2. So it's been shifted 4 units down from where it was before. So that's it for this one. That's how we can show that it's been reflected over the x-axis. And that's how we can adjust the function accordingly. All we have to do is multiply f of x by negative 1. Consider the figure on the left side of the screen. Go ahead and reflect that figure across the origin. Now let's say we have an object in quadrant 1. If we wish to reflect this object over the y-axis, we know it's going to move towards quadrant 2. Now, if we want to reflect it over the x-axis, it will move towards quadrant 4, from 1 to 4. If we want to reflect it over the origin, it's going to move across the origin and go towards quadrant 3. So looking at this graph, since we want to reflect it over the origin, it's going to move mostly from quadrant 2 to quadrant 4. It's going to go in this direction, across the origin. So we should expect some kind of figure in this area. But let's identify the points that we have. Let's call this point A, B, C, and D. So point A I'm going to need that graph. Point A is at negative 5, negative 2. Point B is located at negative 4, positive 3. Point C is located at negative 1, positive 3. And point D is located at positive 1, positive 2. So we're going to reflect this about the origin. So keep in mind, whenever you reflect something across the origin, x, y becomes negative x, negative y. So we're going to change both signs. So A at negative 5, negative 2 is going to change to positive 5, positive 2. B prime is going to become positive 4, negative 3. C prime is going to be positive 1, negative 3. D prime is going to be negative 1, negative 2. So now let's go ahead and plot the new points that we have. So positive 5, positive 2, that's right here. That's A prime. B is at 4, negative 3. And then C prime is at 1, negative 3. D prime is negative 1, negative 2. So that should be here. So this is A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. So as we can see, B was reflected over the origin from 
quadrant 2 to quadrant 4. The same is true for C. A was reflected across the origin from quadrant 3 to quadrant 1. And D was reflected about the origin from quadrant 1 to quadrant 3. So that's it for this video. Now you know how to reflect a point or a graph across the x-axis, the y-axis, and the origin. Thanks for watching.